Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to look at build phases at the buildspec.yaml file. So before I get to the buildspec.yaml file, let's take a quick look at all the build phases that we have in code build. So basically in code build, we have 10 build phases that happen and I'm going to list them all out and tell you individually what each one does. So the first one you're going to encounter in a build is the submitted phase. So the submitted phase is basically, you know, we've, we've started off a build and it's acknowledged that we're starting off a build to the build is submitted. Now this could happen via a trigger or it can handle, happen by you just manually starting the build, but it acknowledges that the build, you know, that a build needs to be started. So that's the submitted phase. The next step in the sequence is provisioning. And basically the provisioning step is well, essentially what it says, it's provisioning, but what it's provisioning is the container it needs in order to do the build. So it could be that it's getting a grabbing a container from you know, the AWS managed ones that they have, or it could be getting it from your, you know, your container registry that you have in AWS, if you have any containers, or it could be getting it from Docker Hub or whatever you've specified. So basically at this step, it gets the container, gets it ready to do the build. Following that, we download the source and we that basically grabs the source from your source provider and installs it on the container. So it gets the source code ready and available for when you do your build steps. Following that, we have the install step. Now the install step is essentially used for installing any packages that you might need on the container, that, you know, such as, you know, for unit testing, say we're going to do Karma for Angular, you will need Google Chrome and a headless version of Google Chrome. So at this step, you can install all the packages needed to do that. And we'll be doing that in a future video. Following that, we get the pre-build phase. That's basically things like, you know, we want to download all the dependencies for the Angular application or any kind of application that we need to get dependencies for you would generally do that at the pre-build step. Following that, we get the build. So that's when we actually do the build. You know, so that's pretty straightforward. Following that one, we've got post-build. So once you finish the build, you will generate some artifacts. And at the post-build step, you can choose to either do something with those artifacts or do nothing. That's up to you. Following that, we've got update artifacts. So I think I kind of skipped over it in the code build project video, but there's a section on artifacts. If you choose to want to update your artifacts and put them somewhere, such as like an S3 bucket, this is the step where it will happen. Following that, we get finalizing. So finalizing is kind of like the opposite of provisioning. It basically deprovisions the container and does a few other little checks before it moves on. And then finally, we get the completed step. So that is basically, we've got the result from the build and we're gonna report that back to anyone who actually cares about it. Now that's the positive path, obviously. So with this whole build phase, there are a number of different paths that you can go down based on any errors that you may encounter. So if we start with the provisioning phase, if we get an error at that step, that means we haven't been able to get the container or the container couldn't run for some reason, you know, something like that. So what normally happens is if you get an error there, you'll go straight to the completed phase, okay? And that makes sense because we're never really able to do anything. For download source, install, and pre-build steps, the build hasn't actually ran yet, but the container has been provisioned. So we need to deprovision that. So that will happen at the finalizing step. So they all move down to the finalizing phase of the build. For all other errors such as the build phase, post build phase, and update artifacts, they'll just try and move on to the next step in the sequence. So kind of the same as it does now. Obviously you'll have errors and you may want to handle that in the next phase if you need to. And for finalizing, obviously, I'm not going to really say that there's going to be any errors there because regardless of what happens, it's going to go to the completed step anyway. So there's no real point to talk about that. So 10 steps, you know, a lot there for you to understand. However, in regards to our build spec file that we'll be creating, 
we can only really deal with four steps, and those are those four. Install, pre-build, build, and post-build. So let's now go ahead and build our first buildspec.yaml file and take these four phases into consideration. So I'm back in the code, and so as I mentioned before, the build spec file needs to be in the root of your application. So I'm gonna come up, I'm gonna create a new file, I'm just going to call that buildspec.yaml as requested by the default of code build. Now, the first thing that you normally do with a build spec file is you have to specify the version of the build spec. So you just come here, you type version colon, 0.2 is the current version of the build spec and also the recommended at the moment. So you just do that. Now I'm going to come down a couple of lines, and now I'm going to specify the phases of my build spec. Now remember, we have those four phases that we can implement, so I'm going to do all four here. So the first one that was in the set of four was the install phase. So I'm going to put install here. Now for each phase, you have a set of commands that you can execute. And the set of commands is basically a list. Now, because I'm not actually gonna be doing anything in terms of building Angular or anything like that at this point, I'm just gonna echo out the phase. So executing install phase, like so. And so hopefully you'll understand that. Now I can do this for all the other phases. So I can come down and the next one was pre underscore build, that's what they call it in the build spec, but it's basically the pre-build step. And then on the next line, I go commands, and then once again, echo executing pre-build phase. And I'm just gonna pretty much copy and paste this for the next two phases, because we're gonna be doing basically the same thing and change this from pre-build to build, and get rid of the pre here, make this one post, and this becomes post, post underscore build. So this is basically how you define your commands at a positive sense of things. So if you, you, know, you wanna specify the commands that should run you know, in your install step, you use the commands part, and for pre-build, it's commands all the way along, right? However, if one of these fail, you can spend a specialize a finally step, like so, and this will always run regardless of whether the command fails or not. Install finally, and I can do the same for the other three, So, I'll come back and change the text in a second. And we'll go post build, finally, and build finally, and pre-build finally. So this is basically the basics of understanding each phase and how we can issue commands. Now you can do multiples of these, so we can go echo executing second part of install phase, and it can go on and on and on, right? So if I now save this, and I'll, and I'll now basically commit this to Git, we'll see what will happen now in code build. So I'm back at the code build project that I built in the previous video. And if you now look down, we actually have a history item because of the fact that I pushed my buildspec.yaml to git and detected that change, ran the hook, which says here, github-hookshot. Basically, the submitter is the webhook. And it succeeded. So the build succeeded. Now, this is an instance of a build now. So if we click on this link, 
we get the status of a build. So we can see the current phase, if you, or well, basically I didn't watch this build go through, but if I had, it would tell you the current phase up here in the build status. But because the build's finished, it says completed. The status was succeeded, so basically the build uh, was done with no issues. We have a start time when the build started, an end time to which it finished, so it took roughly about a minute here. There are no output artifacts at the moment because we didn't specify any artifacts, which is fine. We'll, we'll talk about artifacts in a few videos from now. We've got the initiator here, which as it says, the webhook. We've got the ARN of the build. So this is kind of like the identifier for the build based on AWS's way of identifying resources. We've got the source version, which is essentially, that's the git commit number. The build spec is saying it's using the build spec.yaml that I had in the source root, which I know now. The most important part is this next section. So we've got build logs, and basically we can look in this log and see what was going on in our build. So if we scroll down a little bit, you'll see there's our post build one command that we have. Install had two commands, pre-build have one command, and build have one command. On top of that, we can see just after that that the download source phase was executed. And it says success is true. And then the, we're entering the install phase. And as you can see further down, there is the line that we wrote executing install phase. Then the finally kicks in for the install phase. So we're running command ex executing. Oh, sorry. We had a second command for our install phase. So that fired, so there it is there. Then the finally kicks in, so we've got our finally. So execute install finally. So then the phase completes, you can see install success was true. Following down, pre-build now kicks in. We can see our line for executing the pre-build phase. Then the finally, and then the pre-build succeeded. Then we get into the build phase. Then we see the executing build phase executing build finally and so on, so on and so forth, then post build and post build finally. Now that's pretty much a log file that will always be available for this build. All log files are in CloudWatch and you can actually get the CloudWatch by clicking that log file. I'm not gonna do that here just because it's kind of going away from what I wanna talk about here. The section that you can also look at in terms of the phases, you got phase details. So there are the 10 phases I mentioned earlier, submitted, provisioning, download source, install, pre-build, so on and so forth, right? We can see the statuses for each phase. Uh, this context thing is not really that important at this point. We can see how long each phase took. So obviously submission takes less than a second because it's just submitting. We've got a duration of 18 seconds for provisioning. So that's grabbing the container from AWS. It takes 18 seconds to do that. And you can see when it started doing it and when it stopped doing it. Then we have three seconds that it took to actually get the source code, which is pretty quick. Then the install phase took less than a second, and that's probably because we're just echoing out a you know a message. Same with pre-build, same with build, same with post-build. Upload artifacts took less than a second because we're not actually uploading anything. And then finalizing took two seconds because we're deprovisioning. Deprov and then complete, obviously, is the end state, so there's nothing to worry about there. So that's basically the all the builds, build phases, and the build spec file. So now we have a pretty good understanding of how builds work from a fundamental point of view. In the next video, what we're gonna do is we're going to actually build our Angular application inside of our build spec file and run it in the build. So I'll see you in the next video.